and welcome to Ignition. Now I'm going to have a quick look at the new Isuzu pickup truck. The uh, new D-Max has been launched mainly in Australia so the majority of reviews that if you if you have a look most are launch reviews because we're still sort of in the uh, Covid period. The majority of things have been done away from the standard motor show so the vehicle as you can see here I think looks fantastic they've made a huge huge improvement I've always been a D-Max fan there's there's no getting away from it and um, I'll show you later on what a D-Max can do when it's off-road and I think if you haven't seen uh, four-wheel drive action is is the clip I'm going to use if you haven't watched their channel then stay around and I'll show you a clip and you will be watching their channel but anyway let's have a quick look at the video of the launch the first video is the vehicle on the road let's have a look climb coming up let's see how the upgraded three litre engine responds when we really need it give it a little bit yes feel that there's plenty of real world power and torque there to help when overtaking carrying loads or towing up to three and a half ton plus with a number of updates to D-Max's six-speed auto transmission including better cooling efficiency, you'll be able to feel and see faster and smoother gear changes. It's crazy to think that with this extra grunt under the bonnet, how quiet and smooth the new D-Max really is. Okay, great, we're coming with some ideal twists and turns to really highlight the dynamics of the new suspension design. As you get stuck into these corners, you'll be able to feel where the new D-Max really begins to shine, with improvements to road handling and vehicle dynamics with specifically tuned suspension. You can feel straight away that it's planted and sure-footed with minimal body roll. So, there's no getting away from it. It's a good-looking, a good-looking truck. I think is is what everyone refers to these as trucks, and. Uh, the the drive looks looks very composed it, it looks like they've done a lot of work on its on-road manners the the actual looks of the vehicle as said earlier is is in my opinion I think it looks fantastic to the old one I've been I say I've been very conscious of the D-Max and it's a great bit of marketing I think as you'll see when we show you the off-road clips later on the marketing of that and, and what this vehicle can do some of these um, pickup trucks, utes, whatever we want to call them, they are very, very underrated. Now, the launch clip of it off-road is, is very tame, but let's work ourselves up to some real off-roading. So let's have a look at this one. Well, we're approaching a steep hill, so let's give this a crack in four low. And once the car is stopped, we pop it in neutral and we can engage four low by pushing down and turning the dial. As you can see, it's very quick to engage. It now takes less than a second. Now, I don't think this track's gonna really need rear diff lock, but let's engage it anyway. And you can do that by pushing the button just near the gear shifter. Right, -o, let's go. Rear diff lock combined with hill start assist and hill descent control will make those gnarly tracks just a walk in the park. All just too easy, really. So that's not that, that relatively tame, isn't it? So um, the, 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 the basis in Australia is that they get a three litre diesel. I think the majority of Europe get a 1.9, but they've done a lot of work apparently on the, the diesel engine. It's up to about 140 kilowatts with 450 newton meters of torque, and it's a three litre turbo diesel in that one. And that's, that seems to be heavily into the Australian market. They've launched it over there. I think that obviously it's, it's in the area and Australia buy a heck of a lot of pickup trucks so the D-Max has always been offered or the recent period of, of uh, <coughs> the, the, the vehicles had a, a manual and automatic and they're both going to be six speeders you can still get the 4x2 or you can get the 4x4 system. 4x4 is standard two-wheel drive and you can switch it on the fly and then obviously to go into the two-speed, you're know, using the two-speed transfer case, obviously it goes into uh, neutral and then you flick it over as, as we saw. So 
the three the key numbers really you can tow three and a half thousand kilograms it'll four to eight hundred millimeters um, it's weighing around 1900 kilos and it can hold just over the thousand kilos in its payload so the figures are really good they've improved everything from the previous model and the previous model was a, was a brilliant vehicle um, and really on this one I think the key features are that they've added standard autonomous braking I think that's going to be fairly dependent on the country that you're in and the model that you choose but the, the driver assist systems are, are, are there there's a the, the standard host of them um, and also you get the nice screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto I think it's a nine inch screen uh, on the top spec models there's a bit of leather available dual tone climate control and and as you can see here um, again it's not all done through a, a touchscreen. I know it's my pet hate and you must be bored of me listening to it, but I do believe everything. Trying to change your heating controls and uh, everything through a touchscreen while you're on the go just is dangerous. So I think the majority of manufacturers have, have sort of started to realise this and probably as you drive around more and more and um, nearly have accidents, you realise that the, the screens do need to be dialed back. I've got no objections to LCD screens in a car. I think they look great. But the functionality of a vehicle, you, you don't want your eyes taken off the road for more than a split second, and even that in some respects is too much. Uh, so the, the vehicle will be available in the single cab and a, a, a bogo um, work vehicle. You get the space cab, which has got obviously the two doors and a little bit of space behind you. And then, um, I mean, we tend to call them a king cab or dual cab, whatever you want to call them. Gives you your four or five seater still with a decent payload in the back. But the key to the vehicle for me is that it just, I think it looks fantastic. I've, I've, uh, my father had a uh, Audi L... 100 Audi L100 and Audi 100 something or other and he had that in tangerine orange and I remember when uh, I was very young when we got that and it was just like driving around in something everyone stared at it but orange is a little bit more normal but this looks fantastic I've never really liked orange I don't know whether it's something to do with my father's car or what but this orange one absolutely looks top-notch they do a really nice blue and they, and they do black I'll show you a black one because I've I found one that um, if I was getting one uh, then I'll show you what it looks like but promised you some serious off-road now if you've never watched um, they were called four-wheel drive action they're now called four-wheel drive 24-7 and it's um, a chap called Sean Whale and he drives a land cruiser um, they have some mates that go with them in varying diff different vehicles but um, Graham Cahill this handsome beast here he drives a D-Max and he what he does in that D-Max has just convinced me that that's a so it's marketing done brilliantly uh, I'm assuming that uh, he's given that vehicle although it's never really been said but I'm pretty convinced that um, Isuzu have done a fantastic job in ER go and see if you can kill this and he does a damn fine job in trying to kill it and what that vehicle puts up with is nothing short of amazing so let's have a quick clip from um, four-wheel drive 24-7 now what's at the other end of this they do. all right well let's no, get driving. stuck into it mate I'll go first okay and, mate uh, I'll stand here and watch actually hopefully I don't have to use that tree on the other side to wish myself <laughs> out because that'd be embarrassing no, good luck get all right it. Palm Creek, this is one of the most technical challenges on the tally track. I can't see where my wheels are supposed to go. It's a fairly steep downhill and it can be quite slippery. I bet it is. Uh, you're about to see. I've got hill descent control, so I'm simply going to push that button and let the D-Max take me down. At the base you can see Palm Creek itself. This is a very shallow water crossing with a good firm base. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Have driven Palm Creek. Yeah! yeah. Go to the D Max! Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Mate. What were you thinking, mate? Oh, well, it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> I reckon you drove it like you stole it. I did, I did. No, I had nothing to do with me. Just. It was only when I came down on the front that she got gripped and just went to the top. Yeah, I did. Wheels everywhere, mate. Absolutely. Wheels everywhere. Rain and dirt. No, that was good. Oh, you did good, mate. That was really good. That was a All right, right, let's get you guys up. Well done. So, um, I mean that's just a tiny little snippet of what these guys get up to so if you haven't if you've got any interest in four-wheel driving and um, seeing some countryside in Australia and also Sean 
does some very very good cooking on this program so it's a very strange mix and it's it's so professionally done um i'm very jealous of them although i don't really want to spend hours in the camp you know in a in a tent but um we've all got our own personal problems but um their site there there's a there's a screenshot of it so i suggest you go and give them a, a check out and have a look they've got some fantastic episodes really really good and you get to see some fun uh, i mean australia i've never been it looks a beautiful country but um finally if if i was to get an azuzu mine would look like that i think it is a stunning vehicle um uh, you probably know nathan's got a mitsubishi l200 which is 200 and God knows what it's done, but we're doing a feature on that soon. We're gonna completely redo the suspension and we're gonna put some off-road suspension on it. It's leaf springs at the back, so we've got new leafs. We've got new shocks to go on. Um, we're gonna, we've played around with it. It's got a torsion beam suspension at the front and we've got a bit of an issue with it on one of the uh, center uh, bearings. So we're, we're gonna be doing a series on that all of those changing when he gets his little um you know as you can see i'm still on my own jack jones but he's back tomorrow so um we'll be getting that filmed so we'll be we'll be in the workshop i'll be getting my little pristine hands dirty so anyway hopefully that's interested you in the azuzu there's not really been any um road tests it seems to be launched in australia but one assumes and i am assuming this that that is the vehicle that's coming to europe and, and i can't wait i think it looks awesome so again relatively short one but hopefully Hopefully you've um, seen a new vehicle, you found a new uh, channel to go and look if you haven't looked at uh, the off-road channels of um, four-wheel drive. So um, if you have been watching this, I appreciate your time and um, catch you soon.